This week's devlog is a little bit on the short side because I actually wrote two devlog scripts for this week. More on that later. Hello everyone and welcome back to Noia Dev, the series that aims to prove that one developer can create a successful MMORPG. My name is Dane and this week on Noia Dev we're talking about equipment hot swapping and the future of combat in Noia. For the past few weeks, I have been pondering combat scenarios in Noia and how I can make different encounters feel more unique. If I had to describe my ultimate vision for Noia's combat, it would be a fusion of a few different games, starting with Terraria. Terraria boasts a massive amount of varied weapons across its vertical progression tiers. Each tier has a number of unique weapons to choose from across its multiple class archetypes, and these weapons serve very purposes. Some are better at clearing out hordes of weaker enemies, some are better at melting tanky bosses, and some are better at striking multiple segmented parts of a boss. And Noia will have the same, a number of varied weapons with weapon skills within the various level tiers. The next games that Noia takes combat inspiration from would be World of Warcraft, EverQuest 2, and Final Fantasy XIV. These three games are known for having some incredibly unique spells for each of their varied classes, giving each class their own unique feel. And each game has their own unique approach to boss mechanics. World of Warcraft with mechanics built directly into the boss arena, EverQuest 2 with its old school AoE jousting strategies, and Final Fantasy XIV with attack patterns that turn fights into choreographed explosive dance routines between players and the bosses themselves. And last but not least, Noia will take inspiration from Guild Wars Wars 1, with its absolutely massive skill books forcing highly specialized combat builds through the funnel of limited hotbar space. That is what Noia aims to achieve. Tons of weapons to choose from, all special in their own way, boss encounters that push the player to stay on their toes, and class identities expressed through unique spell books. All refined down to individual player-made builds tailored for specific purposes. And and I need to aid the player as much as I can in refining those unique builds. Players need to be able to quickly swap between farming gear or group gear or bossing gear and most importantly the end game of all MMOs, fashion. Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> Now, in order to help all the players with these different equipment profiles that they need to create, I have bashed my face against the 4D logic puzzle that is the Equipment Loadout Profiles menu. The default keybind of the Loadout Profiles menu is L, configurable in the Player Preferences menu. Upon opening, you will notice four things. The bank slots, the profile buttons, the equipment slots, and the hotbar slots. Simply drag any equipable item you wish to use in a loadout into the loadout bank. The bank auto expands as new items are dropped in and will contract as they are removed. That's right, all your situational stuff that you're saving for that perfect moment can be stored directly in the loadout bank, keeping your inventory clutter free. Once your precious gear is safely stored in the loadout bank, you can begin building your hot swappable loadout profiles. Drag items from the bank slots into the appropriate slots in the equipment area. Any piece of gear in the bank can be used in any of the 10 available loadout profiles. Want your favorite hairstyle to follow you to the ends of the earth? Drop it on every profile and never worry about it again. Want a new look for every day of the week? We got you covered. When you're good and ready, simply hit the apply button on your profile of choice and watch the magic happen. Items in your loadout profile will appear in your equipment menu exactly where you'd expect them to. Any item already equipped in the destination slot will be moved back to the player's inventory, or it will complain with big red letters that the player inventory is full, so you don't have to worry about anything getting deleted. But wait, what's this new icon on all your gear? Why, that little chain link shows you that the particular item comes from the profile 
file system, and the helpful tooltip when you mouse over it will say just as much. Swapping out a loadout linked item with an item from your inventory will cause no ill effects. The profile item disappears from the slot and the inventory item pops into place as one would expect. Now let's say you've been busy and your loadout bank is pretty full from all that gear that makes up your various profiles, but you just looted a new wand and that would be a perfect replacement for your old boss wand. The new system will show you what profiles are currently using an item when you click on said item in the bank. Simply drop your new wand into the bank, click your old wand and see exactly where it's being used and slot in the new wand. Now some of you eagle-eyed players may have noticed a few of those items in the bank are highlighted in red. Those are the items that are currently not being used in any of the loadout profiles. This is a warning to let you know that those items will not stay in the bank once the window is closed. This system isn't a free bank for all your unused junk. Any red highlighted item will get ejected back to the player's inventory when this window is closed, or at the very least it will fill up the inventory and then complain really loudly again. Moving on, the hotbar slots work the exact same way as the equipment slots, only for skills from the skill book or usable items like potions from the inventory. Any blank slots in either the equipment slots or the hotbar slots will do nothing when applied. The system will not blank out existing equipment or hotbar items. Now as I said, I've been working hard on this new system with all its twisted logic, trying, testing, and iterating to make sure no piece of equipment can be deleted or duplicated, and I'm pretty confident I've caught all of the edge cases. But I know some of you love to break things, so I am issuing you all a formal challenge. I have made the buffer nut squash achievement specifically for those of you who manage to break something when the need arises, with video proof, of course, preferably on Discord, in the bugs section, or I guess you can message me directly. So yeah, the gauntlet has been thrown. Go forth and hunt some bugs. Okay, I think that just about covers everything on the new system. Moving on, if you're still watching because of that uh, two devlog script teaser at the start, here's what that was about. The loadout system is the final user experience system that I am creating for Noya. It was a lot of work, and as convinced as I am that it is necessary for the game, and as much as I say that I bashed my face against it for two weeks, the reality is I love making new systems, and I have to recognize scope creep when I see it. This was as close to scope creep as I think I've ever gotten. So no more new systems. The user experience for Noya is locking in. That is why I wrote a second devlog script. It details what is in store for the future of Noya and how that all that is left is bug fixes and content. If you want to know more about that, you'll just have to wait for the next devlog.